architecture influenced by the past and adapt to the present and reflect by the time and the place. So we are the nation with the 2000, over 2,500 years of history, influenced by the Buddhist philosophy and reflect with the culture and architecture. When you take 5th uh, century examples like temples, meditation pathways, monasteries, or even uh, palaces, you can see the, how we can connect with the landscape, how we have interact with the landscape, trying to be minimum impact to the landscape. So actually we were trying to be combined with the ethos of minimalism, and we're trying to do minimal impact to the ground. At the same time, we were trying to use the available material and create a beautiful architecture. We're trying to connect the water and earth and the sky while doing this beautiful marble building. But again, footprint is very small. We were trying to have a dialogue with the nature. We always connect with the nature. That is what we can see with the past history of architecture. So then again, where have we come today? Are we practicing this principle? Whether we have forgotten our past. So this is what we are seeing. We're just building without a meaning. We're trying to borrow the principles, concept from the Western. We're trying to build access rather than need. Is it what we have to practice today? By doing this, what we have creating is, we are trying to create impact on the environment, we are creating pollution, global warming, so many issues that we are facing today by creating us. So as an architect, as a community, are we consider this when you are building? Are we have a solution to reduce this? Are we considering to do less impact on this crisis. When it takes the construction industry, it is one of the biggest contributors to the energy crisis. So this is what you're seeing every day when you're going the street, you see glass building without any meaning. We have not considered we are living in a tropics. We built building without understanding the sun path, without the understanding the orientation, and we use the material just like a facade treatment. Can we use a glass like that? When you use a glass, as you can see, it enters through the glass like a light radiation, and it creates the heat environment and trap inside, so it's almost like a greenhouse effect. So almost like 83% of the energy trapped inside. So what do you do? You normally put a curtain and then try to control it, but it never works because heat, heat already enter through the glass. Then you put the air condition or the fan. So that won't make a big difference. So that creates more and more energy crisis. So do we have an answer for this? So in our practice, we're trying to challenge this. We're trying to find the answers that we can find. So this project we have done in Rajagiriya. It's a studio. We were trying to understand the simple logic, sun path. So we're trying to open to the east. We're trying to block the west. So how do we can do that? We create a wall. As soon as you introduce the wall, then the next question is how you can bring the air movement. So you just introduce a punch or perforated wall. So that simple solution brings the air movement through the space. So that's the end result. So we have used, very commonly used, brick as good thermal material as to screen the building. So no windows exposed to the outside or the west. And at the same time, we're trying to use not to have any curtain. So that filter the light and no heat transferring to into the building. That conditions the space. That, that simple idea brings again another energy like airflow 
by creating a small hole in one side, when you open to a bigger volume, you try to get some really cross ventilation through the space that you get enough ventilation. And then again, we're trying to condition this space by introducing a water in between the space. By having the water with the airflow that cooler the airflow. That simple idea, we will try to continue through the building to make it condition. So we take that same concept to the interior of the vault. We have created the air gap in between the uh, inner wall and the outer wall. That allows the heat won't transfer to the inside. So the air gap makes always the inner wall cooler and direct sunlight won't transfer or the heat inside the wall. So by doing that, we have reduced more than five degrees any given time in this space. So we are trying to do architecture, but we are trying to save the energy. There's no air condition, there's no fan in this space, but you have a very comfortable space to live. So when it comes to the environment, we have created this crisis. This is the end result of what we have done yesterday. So now we are facing today. So are we going to leave it for tomorrow? That's a question that now we have to think as an architect, as a community, when you are building. So the floods is actually one of the main crises in Sri Lanka. Now we are facing the drought. So you can see the component. So why we have not addressed to this crisis? Because of we are losing the water retaining areas. So what we do as a development, we just fill the lands without understanding where the water can flow. So with this, this is actually what we normally do when we get assignment to do in a flood prone land. We just fill and safeguard your property, not considering the other people's, the property get floods. So when we find this challenge property, very sensitive property, to design a weekend home for a musician, we question ourselves, as an architect, are we repeating the same thing? Or can we do something else? Or to minimize the, the contribution as an architect? So, this is very simple understanding. So we study the water level. It's about three and a half to four feet in the maximum flood level. So we want to make a building cost effective, as well as make the touch lightly to the ground. So we created, why can't we have to build lift by using a scaffolding? Scaffolding is one of the easiest material that you can, available material or economical material that can buy. So this is the concept, we just want to create a deck and then we continue the same idea to follow to have a shelter. So idea continues to create architecture, so end result, we are trying to negotiate with the water, negotiate the floods and trying to get this kind of a building. So the flood won't, doesn't interfere with the building, or the building doesn't damage the water le flood level. So we're trying to work with the water. Actually, we want to enjoy the water rather than we just want to keep away from the water. So while you're with the water, we have a different feeling with the building. When it's not there, we'll have a different condition. And we use a lot of material that we can use from the construction sites such as platforms, and most of the things that we use to cut down the cost. And um, more than anything, by having this four feet clearance, we are trying to maintain that gap to air movement to be happen, and it makes it more cooler, the space, and also the plants start growing, and natural habitat move freely through the building without any disturbance. So that allows no disturbance of the natural habitat where it was belongs to the place. So we're trying to continue or keep that character of the space without any disturbance. And with this, architecture, 
We are trying to complete this project in a three months. Three months is a very short period, and the cost of the project is really small. And more than anything, I feel the project is very important. You can dismantle. You can remove the building from the ground and relocate somewhere else. So I think, as an architect, I, that is very important. So you are not permanently damaged the environment. So the final chapter that I'm thinking, economic crisis that are facing last couple of years is not a new thing. And inflation has gone really high. And then you can see the construction cost has gone 2.5 times than two years ago. And how can we build in this kind of a condition? So that is a challenge that I was thinking for the next project. So we thought of Ambalama. This is a resting place from 18th century. And it gives you a really beautiful connection that it can be pavilion that you can live in. But then again, fundamental idea of a house is you have to provide the shelter as well as the security. So do we, if we can combine these ideas to make the building, it can be more effective. So if you take the cost of the doors and windows and the finishers, it's almost like one third of the project cost. So if we can compromise this, you can maybe control 25%. That's a big component. So in this project that we designed for our artists, we are trying to work with the perforated wall through, in a perimeter wall in a very high way. So that allows the air movement to come through the space and leave the ground floor totally open. So I have not introduced any single doors and windows within the house. So this is actually the common areas where you have your living, dining, and other gallery spaces are all open. So it's almost like a living in a garden. So that simple concept allows you to cut down your cost and the maintenance free. I left everything unplastered. So that's where you live and with the hard furniture. So where you have your family, you can lock. So I have created the rooms in a one layer, then you can lock and live safely and with the conditioned space. So that's what everybody wants. But that is very small core when it comes to the bigger room or a bigger space. So this is the pigment plaster that we have used for the building to cut down the cost and the maintenance free. And at the same time, we're trying to celebrate and connection with the landscape. So that's a value added thing. And we have achieved this project less than 10 million. So with all that thing, it's just the idea is important. And we have taken this challenge to create these spaces with the help of the, or understanding with the client's requirement. And we are trying to showcase these three projects to give you idea. In this any crisis, if you're concerned, if you thought what is, what, how you contribute to minimize the impact to the environment, if you can reduce the energy crisis, if you can minimize the cost of the building in some what way that you can be create architecture that you can enjoy. So I feel if we can think out of the box and concern and conscious about what you're making and you can create architecture that is resilient. Thank you.